Thank you for inviting me. Um, this is a real, it's a real privilege for me to be here, and uh, um, and that was a very powerful uh, presentation. Um, and uh, I'm glad I heard it, and I'm sorry I have to go after it. Um, I sort of had the opposite problem of Harriet. Uh, she wanted to be a scientist and was told she couldn't do it. Uh, I never wanted to be a scientist and I was told I had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> or you'll ruin your life. Um, why? So let me tell you a little bit about that. And, uh, and then I'll tell you a little bit about how I got into writing. Uh, and then um, we'll talk about the specifics of science writing and medical writing um, in the question and answer period. So let me just represent my story a little bit. So, um, so I grew up in a, a family that immigrated from India. And my parents, like um, many immigrant uh, parents, and uh, especially immigrant Indian parents, had a very unique perspective on the world. Um, and it was colored by their experiences, their experience of struggle, you know, giving up their homeland, coming here, struggling uh, financially in a foreign culture. So they sort of adopted this, this stance toward the world as a unsafe place. And, and, uh, they wanted to protect their kids from uh, what they saw as a, a as the dangers of uh, of living in a foreign country, and um, and clearly, you know, as with most immigrant Indian and most immigrant parents, uh, you know, financial security was a very critical element to how they th sort of perceived the world. So they strongly encouraged my brother and me, less so my sister, to go into medicine, to become doctors. Um, my brother sort of always knew he wanted to be a doctor, and he is one, and he's a very good one. Um, but I had uh, different interests. Um, I was, uh, like Harriet, um, very interested in English and writing when I was growing up. Um, but my dad had this uh, very different, uh, peculiar way of looking at, um, at, at, at uh, academic disciplines. He, 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 his, his favorite um, phrase was, you know, non-science is nonsense. <laughs> and, uh, and he, he he's a scientist. He's a he's a plant geneticist, and um, and he wanted me to to become a doctor because um, being a doctor sort of would give me all the advantages that he didn't have um, the security the the you know all the sort of pragmatic things that you can think being a doctor affords so. Um, but I didn't really want to do it, and uh, and I rebelled, and uh, you know, uh, you know, y you guys are probably you know at that phase, you know, where you're thinking about what you want to do, and you're probably going through some degree of rebellion. Well, you know, I was a serious geek, and my rebellion was saying I don't want to be a doctor. You know, that was like <laughs> my big thing. You know, uh, I didn't str go go too far. Um, into into other things, um, so um, so so then we sort of compromised, and and I said, okay, well, you know, I'm sort of interested in in science, um, so I'll go to college and I'll figure out what I want to do. And I was sort of interested in history and political science and and English, but you know. But that was all very sort of nebulous, you know, vague stuff. And 
and my dad's sort of injunctions to study something that was very clear-cut and objective and we know now that science is not objective um, but uh, that sort of was ringing through my through my head um, so I ended up studying physics and and I studied physics because I was frankly fascinated by the way the physics minds worked I wasn't so much interested in you know the physics problems but I was I was fascinated by you know Einstein and and uh, you know Feynman and Heisenberg and how they thought about things and how they sort of used math to figure out the secrets of the universe so I figured you know I'm interested in that um, and um, you know what better way of uh, of being part of that tradition than just to study what they did and and I ended up studying a lot of physics. Uh, I got more into it as time went went on, but um, but part of my thing was that that I didn't know what else to do because I was very conflicted, you know, from the beginning. Um, and so I got my degree in physics, and then I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do with it, and uh, and I thought about doing various things. I en ended up applying to law school, like a lot of people who don't know what they want to do with their lives, and. Uh, and 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 ended up uh, deciding that I was going to go to uh, to grad school in physics. So I went to grad school, but you know there was this sort of gnawing thing in me that that I wasn't really doing what I was what I should be doing, what what I was uh, groomed to do. You know what you know what were my natural talents, and so um, so I ended up. Uh, uh, sort of midway through grad school uh, I started thinking about um, about medicine and and I started thinking about it because uh, a very close friend of mine got sick and uh, and and she got sick with an incurable illness and and I was studying quantum dots at the time and you can you know I wasn't that good at it and and then you know you someone you love is is really sick um, so it got me thinking about well what am I doing with my life and wouldn't I be better off doing you know I was pretty good at science wouldn't I be better off you know studying medicine and and doing something that could help her and help people in general and that's how I started thinking about going to medicine and at the same time I also knew that there are, there's this long tradition of doctor writers and um, and I won't say that I went to medical school to become a writer, although some people in my family have told me that. Um, but there is this thing in medicine. You know, medicine is about people. And the best writing is about people. And what do doctors do? Well, they interview people. They talk to people. They, they get at people's secrets, their physical secrets, their mental secrets. And, um, and then they try to help them. And, and, I, and I think there's a lot of overlap with, with writing, too. Um, you know, the, there's this thing in medicine that 80% of diagnoses are made on, on the basis of a patient's history um, and physical exam. But, you know, by talking and touching a patient, you can figure out what's wrong with them about 80% of the time. Um, and, you know, when we present patients on the wards or on rounds, we talk about their story. Um, you know, he was at home and this happened and that happened and he got sick and then, you know, and, uh, and that's, you know, that's what you do as a writer too, you know, when you write about people, you, you, you figure them out. And, uh, and when you present patients uh, on rounds, you tell their story. So there's, there's a sort of a lot of overlap in terms of narrative between what doctors do every day and what writers do. And there's this long tradition of doctor writing. So, so I ended up applying to medical school, and uh, and I got in. And um, and the summer before I went to medical school, I decided that well, I had the summer off and I was going to do something. Uh, so, my time is up. So I'm going to tell you about that, 
and how that led to my becoming a writer uh, during the question and answer period. So 